turning over. Hello and welcome to the CDA YouTube channel. I hope you're all keeping well. Thanks for tuning in. Today I am very lucky to be joined by two of the busiest ladies in casting, Shakira Dowling. Hello. Leanne Flynn. Hi everyone. <laughs> and today we're going to be discussing self-tapes. Uh, we're going to be chatting all about self-tapes. Please don't forget to subscribe. Keep an eye on our social media for any further upcoming videos. Okay, so guys, first question, and we'll go straight into it. Lovely. What if you don't have a reading partner? Should you read both roles? Leave a gap? Try and find someone via online platform services to help? Or can a non-actor read in? Shaq, I'm going to cross that straight over to you, my dear. Okay, um, I would like a live person, and if possible, they should be just standing left of your camera. Um, just so your eyeline is perfect with them. I don't really mind if it's your mother, your brother, or anyone who's in your house down, you know, on lockdown at the moment. Um, ideally, in the normal world, you'd have a couple of mates who are actors who, you know, you WhatsApp and help each other out. Um, that's the easiest way. And then you know that they're on call and you're on call to them whenever they need. Sorry, I'm turning off my phone. Um, whenever they need any help. Um, but obviously that's not always possible. Sometimes you have that overnight need to get it across to the US first thing in the morning, et cetera, where, and you're learning the lines on the tube on your way back from your last job. So we do understand that obviously it's, that's the ideal scenario, but sometimes you might have to do it differently. Um, the other option is kind of get someone on Zoom and record it that way, which isn't ideal because as you see, the framing is, you know, you're, you look like you're sitting at a desk, but it's kind of better to have someone live in my opinion anyway. What about you, Leanne? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think we, we've done some self-tapes during lockdown with um, kids and uh, their parents have been um, helping on the other side and uh, they, they did pretty good jobs really it, it's always best like you say to have them off camera and I think it's really important for parents especially if it's the children you know maybe their first self tapes and things to realize that that they don't need to be in the scene because occasionally you get the parents next oh, yeah. to them <laughs> that's always quite fun um, but yeah just off camera um, is, is really helpful um, and then but yeah if you're really struggling they're like we said there are lots of online platforms that you can use and I think there's one at the minute that maybe you even um, get paid to be a self-tape reader so it might be worth actors looking into because it might help them make a bit of money um, but it's always nice to actually help each other out if you're if you've got actor friends isn't it yeah yeah I like think that's it. a very good point Leanne um, of course, community is great, but in these times when we don't have uh, the community around us like we used to have, I, I think the main thing is to get the self-tape done. Um, mm -hmm. If you are unfortunately isolating alone, then I think leave a gap, or there's also an app um, which can record the dialogue for you and feed it back, almost like a backing track like you'd have with a song. So again, that could be a useful tool um, and one thing I would say as well, just to add to what the guys mentioned, is watch for volume. Watch for the volume of the person reading in. You're the person self-taping. You're the most important. Mm -hmm. So the volume coming uh, from your, the person reading in should always be much lower. I'm not too worried about that. It's for your timing and your beats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, another, that, I guess another option, if, they, if you're really struggling, is to have a friend, an actor friend, who's... Um, talking to you through your phone. So if you're not recording on your phone, you can always have them talk to you through your phone. Yeah. Good idea, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, everybody happy with that one? I yeah. think so. I mean, I guess the other thing to say is, yeah, don't, don't be outshined by your reader. <laughs> <laughs> Which does happen. Sometimes they, they are the best. Are you listening in and you're going, oh, I wonder who was reading in. Who's <laughs> that great voice? <laughs> <laughs> so guys, on to question two, and again, thanks for sending in your questions, folks. How to tackle self-tapes with no dialogue or with lots of action in them? Leanne, do you want to kick off with that? 
Yeah, sure. Often um, that's a really good one for commercial castings, isn't it? And mm -hmm. we're seeing lots of um, commercial castings at the minute with self tapes, and mm -hmm. they're mainly um, due to they they kind of just want to see your personalities right now and just see you um, be yourself, which is always really important anyway. But um, but yeah, when you haven't, what is it again? The question. So if you've got how to tackle yourself with no dialogue and lots mm -hmm. of action, yeah, that it's it's actually quite hard. Um, just think of yourself in the actual casting room and being in a commercial where they say, oh, can you have a cup of tea or something? And just do, I mean, you can actually have a prop, you could be at home, you could have a prop, you can use a cup of tea, just do it for real. Just be yourself and be very natural with it. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? And don't think that, you know, maybe there's, maybe also you've got a scene where there's dialogue with the other person and you're just there to listen to the dialogue. Yeah. Don't just be thinking, oh, I've got my one line coming up and that's all you're concentrating on. Actually, it's really important, those gaps in between and listening, and, you know, and then, and reacting to the person speaking. Yeah. I think the reactions is what we're looking for. Yeah. So if the person is talking, if there is dialogue from someone else, do they make you feel happy? Do they make you feel excited? Um, especially when it's commercials, because that's what they want to see. They want to see those animated faces and reactions more than anything else. Yes. And again, I just add to that, to what the guys have said is, I think, keep it simple. Uh, mm. Read what we've sent you. Even if there's no um, dialogue, there's still beats with the action, you know, whether it's taking up your cup, looking out your window and having a mm. soft. Follow it, keep it simple. You know, we're fully aware that you're self-taping and that you're not being directed, but do stick to the guidelines, you know, because again, if we send you something, it's the equivalent to being directed. So follow the guidelines and keep it simple, okay? Yeah, and we will always give as much detail as we can uh, right. when we're asking totally. for self-tapes because we want you to do well, don't we? So. That's the thing, guys. You know, yeah. we said it on the last um, mm. stream that we did. Uh, we want you guys to do very good auditions. It doesn't benefit us any way, whether you do a good audition, or sorry, do a bad audition, doesn't benefit us in any way, and a bad cell tape doesn't benefit us in any way. No, no. I mean, generally, there are literally very clear instructions. Mm -hmm. Number one, like you said, pick up the cup. Number two, take a sip. <laughs> Number three, look out the window. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to do it in the order you've been told, similarly to if you were in the room. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll move on to question three. <coughs> three. Mm -hmm. What backdrop light and sound? What about backdrop light and sound? How important is this? Shaq, I'll hand that straight to you, my dear. <laughs> okay. So I think, especially in lockdown, you've got time to, you know, do some rehearsals on how to self-tape. So if you look at the backdrop behind me, it's quite busy. I wouldn't really recommend my own or Leanne's or <laughs> Brendan's backdrop right now. Too busy. So we want something as plain as possible. It doesn't have, you don't have to spend lots of money on it. Just find an area in your house where you've got a fairly plain wall where you can take down that one or two pictures that are there. Um, check out what the lighting's like day, night, afternoon. Um, at the moment I've got you know, natural light switch streaming through the window. But if I was recording this at night time, it would look very different. Um, and maybe I'd need a table lamp. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just, just find out what it looks like for you at different times of the day, because we all have to self tape when it, when it comes and there's no, oh, you've got two days to figure this one out. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of buying backdrops and buying lighting, I mean, I always hate asking actors to spend money, to tell you the truth. Um, but, you know, if you're taping for pilot season, you're taping three or four tapes a week um, for the whole of the month of January and February, then maybe it's worth spending, you know, 45, 50 quid on just a roller, a roller and some basic lights. Um, but your phone is absolutely fine and you can buy cheap, desk tripods anywhere really even you know in your local pound shop type thing i think i i read or saw on social media or something recently that perhaps if you um if you if you've got a job then use some of the money from your first job to invest in something but don't don't do it before that like you mm. know you use 
what like you say use what you can and maybe invest in a little tripod or something cheaper but yeah but yeah if you've done a, a first job and you've got a bit of money behind you maybe then you can think oh maybe I will just invest in something that will help my career Deanna, anything else you want to add on that question? Um, no, I don't think so. I think the main thing is, is try it all out. Try out your equipment. Um, mm -hmm. See what you have. I mean, like now, both me and Leanne, we've just said we've got a book underneath our laptop, yeah. you know, just to get the height right. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't take much as long oh, as you give it a go. <laughs> the lighting, they all are very important. They're equally important. The lighting's important. The sound is important. Um, and the framing so yeah just work out what works best um, yeah and the and light at the minute my light is um, in front of me and I think um, and yours is inside and that looks nice as well mm -hmm. but it's so, quite different isn't it it gives yeah. a different mood as well uh, Brendan's the slightly darker I'm not sure where your windows are but yeah it gives a different mood and that that is important for what you know if we're doing comedy or something, we want a different mood to if it's quite science, yeah. something a bit more serious. Absolutely. I, I, I would think as a general rule, though, I would think to um, if you look back at what you've recorded and you are having a problem hearing it or you're having a problem seeing mm -hmm. it, then we're going to have that same problem. Yeah. So you need to yeah. figure out how you're doing it. <laughs> a poor sound lighting, the, all these things are very important. You know, this is all about communication. You need to communicate the piece that we've sent you. So we need to hear it and we need to see it. And this yeah. is a perfect time to figure out your, because of what's happening in the world at the moment, self-tapes are, are going to become more and more and more important in our industry. So it's, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to be able to record self-tapes. And again, you know, going back to what the guy said about, you know, purchasing things, you know, put it on your Christmas list. You know, yeah. if you can yeah. put it on your Christmas list, it's a very good purchase, you know. And again, same as the guys, I never tell actors invest, invest. You know, I, I hate saying that to people, but this will be a very good investment for you to, to have uh, things that will help in your um, self-tape toolkit. Mm -hmm. And you should, your self-tape, you know, toolkit should be, you know, almost military now that we've had all this time um, to, to figure it out. Okay. Anything else from you guys or shall we move on to the next one? No, I think that's all right. Yep. Awesome. So moving on to question four, is it okay to use a smartphone? Is it good enough? Leanne? Absolutely. Um, that it's more than good enough, I think, these days. Um, I just did a job um, recently and they're actually going to give the cast um, the newest um, iPhone, I think it is, um, so to do their self-shooting because of lockdown. <laughs> so yeah. they're actually going to give everyone these phones. I know, they're amazing. Some of these phones are amazing, especially the latest ones that have like four cameras or whatever on them. Yeah. Um, but I think you know anything that's an old phone from the last two years yeah. is good enough really, two or three Absolutely. years. Mm. I, again, I, I totally agree with that. And again, if you just, you know, think about your sound and lighting and shooting mm. it nice and simply, you'll get a good picture. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on to question five. Ooh. Where should the ident go? <laughs> End or start? <laughs> what frame size, size to shoot the scene in? Close up? Question mark. <laughs> Shaq, okay. what do you do? Um, so I mainly do film, so we don't really ask for an ident in film as much as um, commercials, but when we do do commercials, we need all of those shots. We need a full length shot. We need your um, profiles, both, you know, full length and your hands. Exactly. We all love doing this, don't we? <laughs> Jazz hands. Um, <laughs> To tell you the truth, that's usually recorded separately and, you know, put on to the front, you know, as in the first clip. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have, I mean, I don't mind if clips come in too, as in the self-tape and the ident, or if they're mashed together. Um, it doesn't really ma matter for me. What do you think, Leanne? Yeah, I agree. I, doesn't, I don't mind either. If they want to do a little tiny clip, 
of just themselves and then go and then have the other clip as their main casting i think that is probably better because then the director doesn't have to watch all of that stuff because he's probably not that interested or she whereas the client might be a bit more interested yeah i mean i think they only really watch that once they've actually um you know selected who they really like because obviously body shape is important and seeing people from different angles, et cetera. But beyond that and holding up product with my terrible hands, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Lockdown nails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, front or back. I'm, I'm not too worried as long as we've got it. Cause we'll eventually need that information because you know, as Shaq just mentioned, the actual client in commercial will want to see, you know, if you're holding the product with your hands, what your hands look like, so on and so forth. So it's good to have that footage. But again, I'm not too fussed whether it's, you know, front or, front or back of the, of the seat. Do you know what might be interesting as well at the minute? I know we don't ask for it in commercial castings normally, but maybe, put, maybe say your height as well. I would agree, it's, yeah. It's yeah. quite hard to tell on a self-tape how tall someone is. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think that's the type of thing that usually we would put into instructions. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we want to know, and especially if it's kids under sixteen, we want you to mention your your age. Obviously, beyond that, we would never ask. But yeah, you know, those sorts of things are important, especially when you're casting. You know, a ten year old, but we want them to look eight, and there's a hell of a lot of yeah who are ten who look like they're eight. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, moving on to the next question. Mm -hmm. ah, here we go, question six. Should you learn your sides? Should you record all the sides <laughs> if you are just a section of them? Oh, yeah, do you want to take that one? Yes, yes. I mean, we have prepared those sides. We have taken a selection of the script. It's taken us a while to select it because it has some sort of character arc within the whole scene or the whole two scenes that we've given you. And therefore, we want you to do them exactly like you would should you get that job. So all the lines, all the whole section and that whole character arc that you would have. Yeah. And, and yeah, learn learn your sides. Um, obviously, if you if you've literally got just got them, and we haven't given you any time, which is really unfair, then mm -hmm. maybe have them resting on your lap or nearby so that you can glance at them. And we totally understand if you need them, if if you haven't had any time. But if you have had time, then definitely learn the sides, please. Please. <laughs> yeah. And I just add to that. Bottom line learn your sides of course if you, if it's last minute and there's no time we understand but you know you got to make time because it's your performance that's going to look better if you're off book yeah. rather than looking down like that yeah you know you'll look so I much mean, better it off is, it would be very very unfair for a casting director to give you a lot of sides to do overnight but if it is two pages then actually you should be able to learn sides that quickly mm -hmm make the time make the time mm -hmm. okay so moving on to our next question uh how long should a self-tape be um as long as the script that you've been sent is i guess um but then i it, i guess they've asked this question because it might be oh can you tell us a bit about yourself or can you and you could ramble on and on and on i think if it's something like that then maybe just 30 seconds a minute max if it's just a bit about yourself but be, yeah. yeah otherwise whatever length the sides are Agreed. i'd say the same for improvisation if you're being asked to improvise mm -hmm. a scene you know i mean think about how long the scene might be you know we, we don't need 15 minutes of improvisation if the scene is 30 seconds no. so again think about what you're producing in line with what we're asking you to do yeah and if it's a commercial you know how long a commercial is so don't don't go beyond that don't don't spend five minutes improvising whatever it is because no commercial is five minutes in length no definitely not and on to our next question which is what would you advise to you in the use of props location wardrobe and what to wear mm -hmm. jack 
Um, I always think a hint of the character in what you choose to wear. Um, so if, you know, you're playing someone who's a little bit sexy or whatever, yeah, just a slightly lower cut top and that's enough. Or, you know, if, if, they are a teacher or you know just pulling your hair into a bun or whatever you feel that would add to the character but I really don't advise doing full costume in any way. A hint is always a good thing. A hint, yeah the bigger earrings the you know just that little maybe the darker lipstick that sort of thing sorry boys I'm not really mentioning you here. A suit, you know, a it's an office worker you know yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, a shirt if you're an office worker, that sort of thing, if it's a bit more corporate. Yeah, and if you're, a, you, know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's the way to think of all characters. If you're a nurse coming off a 12-hour shift, you know, you shouldn't be glammed up. No. You know, so what you wear in your self-tape should be, you know, if you're that nurse, let's say, as an example, minimal makeup, hair probably tied back. Mm -hmm. you know and for the lads you know if you're playing a laddie lad you know might be a polo shirt or a football jersey or something that gives a nod not your most hoxony looking shortage type jazz you know <laughs> if you're meant to be a blokey bloke you know so again it's an, a little hint and a nod to the character i've got a big bugbear about self tapes and what certain people wear in them those 80s style jumpers the ones that are slightly off the shoulder that some girls wear are so unflattering that the thing with a self-tape is we need to get a sense of you and if you're wearing a very big jumper you know it totally our perception of you is completely different because of this massive jumper or some people wear big ass hoodies mm -hmm. or big ass bloody overcoats with the fur on the top i mean i've seen that in self-tapes it's ridiculous you know, you shouldn't be wearing big bulky clothes because it can't get a perception of you on a self-tape if you're wearing big ass clothes. You're right. Actually, it's all about the neckline, isn't it? I mean, look, we're all, if you look at us, we all have very different necklines and they do actually give a perception of the type of person you are or what, what you're portraying today. Mm -hmm. We're all quite smart today because we're on... We're actually on tape. <laughs> we actually put some makeup on and not working. <laughs> not working in a pair of, you know. <laughs> oh, it's nice to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only, the only excuse we have to dress up these days. And uh, again, just quickly on that, of course, props can be handy, but again, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. And that, location, that maybe, that's it. You know. Or a book or a magazine, maybe. Nothing. doesn't need to get to or a computer doesn't need to get complicated and the only other thing i'd say is location goes back to what we said before just make sure it's well lit and mm -hmm. clear of clutter everybody happy with that one yep yeah awesome. uh question nine how many takes should you send mm. who wants one or two? To yeah one or two it depends how, how different your two are, to tell you the truth. If they're two the same, then you don't need to send two. If you've done, you've made a bold choice on one of your tapes and you a more sort of subtle version on your second, then that's two to send, but no more than two, I'd say. I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah, one or two. Because again, a lot of times sub tapes are first rounds, you know, so it's getting a hint of you before maybe a Zoom chat or back to when we might be doing meetings again. Who knows? Yay. Yay. <laughs> so our final question, and again, folks, thank you so much for sending in your questions and we hope you've enjoyed our chat. Our last question is, how should you, should you name files before uploading and sending and how should they be sent? What should the file size be? Oh my God, we give so many instructions about this and so many people do not follow the email instructions. So I always ask for your full name. So Shakira Dowling, dash the character name, Alice or whatever. And then, you know, the name of the project, if I'm doing seven projects at the same time. Of course, if I'm only doing one and it's, you know, then you don't need to give me the name of the project, but it always says in the instructions, what we want the file to call, be called because one two three four five mv will get lost and i'll be listening to your idea and you'll go 
Insecure darling. And I'll be like, who was that? Insecure darling. And then you're like trying to find, you know, we're become investigators to find what role it was, what job it was, and where this self tape is meant to be, you know, uploaded to. Mm -hmm. Leanne, how do you like yours sent, to tell you the truth? That's another good question along the end of that question. Well, I also put on um, instructions to say, it'd be great if you could retransfer it, um, if the file size is too big or attach it to an email. And I even say, most of the, I even say if you're really struggling, just WhatsApp it to me, if you're really struggling. Um, especially for, for people that are new to the industry yeah. or non-actors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I am a bit more flexible with them and I, but when you're an actor or if you've, or you're at drama school, you should, you should really learn this as part of your craft. I think yeah. you really need to know how to send something professionally, professionally to a casting director. Um, yeah, cause last week I had, oh, hundreds of tapes and I had to just keep naming them. So I put it out on Twitter about labeling and a few people came back saying you know some people are shooting on a phone and then they're going to send it from their phone so they can't label it so that's actually something else that we have to bear in mind and maybe they you have can to learn. actually sorry you can, you can actually. i know because martin delaney a lovely actor a friend of mine who he yes. said you can actually do this and gave some advice so that's actually on my twitter we maybe should have um put it on the CDA and say how you can do it. Because, Actually, uh, that might be a good idea, um, post this this thing to do a sort of, I don't know, slideshow on how to label things, how to upload things to yeah. WeTransfer or, yeah, how to send, basically, because it, it is basic instructions, but it's, you know, what apps to use, what are the yeah. easy download free apps to, to rewrite your name onto a, a file etc there's so um there's a few things also that we haven't touched on um which i was chatting to my director uh, on a project yesterday about and um that is with children um they they are very new to this self-taping thing some of them and parents so maybe you know maybe there should be like a little instruction kit on what to do um just some instructions that the agent should actually send out. Agents yeah. should really be the ones explaining this, but maybe they maybe they just need a nudge from us. And mm -hmm. then... Actually, so we did a job probably about mm, six or seven years ago where I was looking for a young, as in 15, 14 year old Kashmiri girl. And obviously that was a community that you don't find actors in drama school uh, or coming out of drama school. or. Um, so it was really hard. We did a worldwide search and me and my assistant did put together a bit of a dummy's guide, like two pager on how to self tape because mm. that was the first round of casting and it was international. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I sometimes send that when it's doing kids, to tell you the truth, I send that same sheet that probably needs updating now, but yeah. <laughs> I think we can definitely put something on the CDA Twitter folks that'll uh, give you guidelines how to name your files if you're shooting from your phone but mm -hmm. if you are shooting from your desktop or are putting your footage onto your desktop and then we transferring it on you should definitely bottom line label your files it's for your own benefit because if we're on a job and we're getting loads of files through we might have to move them into another folder to say that we got to rename and you know, if we can't get on to renaming them and we don't have time to review them, you know, it's it's going against you, you know, because if we have to then find the footage and it's not properly labeled, it's like, oh, I remember such and such sent a file, but now I can't find it. Label your files. You mm -hmm. know, it's the same as doing an ident. It's so we can find it because there might be thousands of different self tapes that we're looking at. You know, if somebody's sometimes sort of also it's, it's that thing of like, um, you know, you've seen a self tape for one job and you remember the girl's name. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I just need to find her. She taped for, you know, that seven up commercial or whatever. So yeah. you can't go through all the seven up commercials just to find Molly's tape. Yeah. You put in Molly, whatever, then you should be able to just in your folder find them all the tapes she's ever done for you. Yeah. Totally agree. That is a very good point, Shaq. You know, it's for your benefit, folks. Mm -hmm. It's for your benefit because a casting director, like Shaq just said, 
might remember you from another project and then be able to just type in your name and there's some footage to quickly show our director and say, listen, this person's awesome. They're like, yeah, I love it. Get them self tape, get them in. So one other thing on that question, guys, was file size. Of course, it can't be massive HD quality. We only have a certain amount of spaces on our computer. So try if you can't keep the files. There's no, obviously the file is going to be as big as the footage, but don't shoot on super mad HD quality. That's not going to be able to be uploaded to a website. And another thing about um, we transfer and that type of thing is um, actually, if your agent sends us the little we transfer link, then that won't, and um, we download it, we have downloaded it. But the actor who sent the original we transfer to their agent won't know, won't think that it's been opened. That's true, yeah. Yeah. But it has. Yes. It's just that the agent has sent us a, the link to it rather than the uh, original we transfer. Yeah, that's right. And it doesn't link back to the, uh, to the actors. And so, so many actors are complaining that their tapes have not been downloaded, but they most likely have yes and it's and it's really upsetting for us to think for people to think that we don't bother opening them mm. yeah we, we really we really do it's true i'd say one in ten actors do send you a message saying have you downloaded it it's given us a notification that this hasn't been downloaded and that's just the way the system seems to be because if if an agent sends you the link as opposed to forwards you the whole download the whole we transfer file then it won't yeah. give a notification saying this is has. And another thing, um, we might send it to our assistant to download. Mm -hmm. And the same thing. So then they'd say, well, you haven't downloaded it. Well, we did. We just passed it on to someone else to download. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah. <laughs> Guys, same. some awesome advice there. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Um, I think just uh, be yourself in most of them as well show your personalities as well as the characters. So maybe that's quite nice in the self and in, in the uh, ident just to show you as you rather than being a robot. Um, because directors like to see the real you, don't they as well? They do. And that's what you miss from uh, being in the room to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. um, obviously there's nothing quite like getting in the room, getting in the casting suite. Um, also because we're there to put you at ease and to, have a little chat or whatever and we, we miss that from self tapes yeah. but it is obviously the new norm and we're all gonna have to get used to it yeah <laughs> and we will folks and we will listen thank you so much to Shaq thank you so much Leanne guys we're gonna wrap it up there again hit the subscription button on the CDA YouTube channel to see any of the latest videos that come out you're awesome folks thank you all so much thank you.